everybody, welcome back to Hit Point, an anime news show, a JRPG news, news show, a niche news show, a show where Baku and I will talk about everything and anything that catches our interest and or ire. We broadcast live every single s s Monday, <laughs> every single s Monday at uh, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be uh, previewing a, a, a some trailer i think we have we have like two things to talk about today honestly mm -hmm. uh, that yep. that's news related but then but then but then but then the show goes off the rails i don't even know what's going to happen today Baku, no one knows what where are we going with today's podcast episode uh so we had like two weeks to gather news did, did we have a podcast last week i don't think we did we didn't. Yeah. And that's why we're here today. We've, we've gathered two whole weeks of news and we're going to cover it in like two whole sentences. Mm -hmm. So today is our uh, our discussion podcast day. It's just going to be hanging out, Baku and I, uh, you at home. Uh, and and we also have voicemail and, and some comments from the previous week that we get to talk about. We got all kinds of stuff we can do. But um, yeah. Long story short, there's not a whole lot of news. <laughs> not, not right now. <laughs> it's like, you know, we're out adrift in the JRPG news sea, and yeah. like, there's just no wind, and we're just floating along. We're just going to kick back, relax, and just, you know, let, let let the wind take us where we may go. Yeah, yeah. Keeping it by that allow By that analogy. <laughs> <laughs> just so, yeah. just going just gonna to pull out a, a little table, play some Yahtzee, uh, little, mm -hmm. little board games. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're going to do. Um, exactly. But I think that we will probably be acknowledging chat a little more often this time around. Uh, that's right. Just because, uh, you know, that's... That's what we got to do sometimes just to, you know, so this is your opportunity if if you, you know, don't want to throw super chats at us at the end of the show, which we will always read those. Uh, but if you feel like just uh, chatting with us that way, this works, too. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I guess we're just going to start with, uh, with, well, I don't know. I normally, I remember a long time ago, I used to ask you what the, the leading headline was. I, I feel like I should ask you anyway. Baku, what is <laughs> what is today's leading headline? Uh, the leading headline is, uh, <laughs> we don't have anything. <laughs> we, we are simply putting on a show to remind you all that we're still alive. We are back to you, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> we are still alive. Not to be confused with the viewer still alive, but, uh, sure. so, but for real, uh, yeah, we, we mostly, we, we felt bad. We didn't get to have a show last week. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. so we're like, well, let's, let's do something for those fans who, who just like to listen in, even even if there isn't really anything going on in the world. So thank you all so much for being here today. Um, thank you. Let's lead off with some of the some of the questions or, or comments that we got from last week. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Let's start with Denny89. He said, I'm currently playing Revelations Persona PS6 for the first time, and I entered the Velvet Room tonight. When I heard that theme, I got all emotional and started to learn it on the piano. What a great soundtrack, man. That is one thing that Persona doesn't fail on. Uh, the soundtrack is like say what you want about like the games like if you don't like yeah. it or, or not but it always hits the, the music music I will always say hits. it's it's one of two things that always hits I mean they always have fantastic character development uh, I mm -hmm. think but the music is is it's almost like Falcom like it just almost never misses um, yeah and Revelations Persona I've never played that version uh, but I I think. I would probably really like it. I played the PSP remake, Persona 1, um, Shin Megami Tensei Persona is what they called it, which is mm -hmm. weird because it never used to be part of the Shin Megami Tensei umbrella. Um, it was its own revelations thing in, in Japan for a while. But then they're like, okay, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll call this part of the, the Shin Megami Tensei thing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, they changed out the music and everything in the PSP remake and they added a bunch of J-pop so, and it just, in my opinion, it, it clashed a little bit with like the mm -hmm. moody ambiance of, of Revelations Persona, but, uh, but they did keep the Velvet Room theme and it, when you play it and when you're playing one of those earlier versions of the games and you hit that Velvet Room, 
the uh, the song that plays the requiem is it the requiem the poem for everyone's souls. Uh, it's it's one of those two requiem or or, yeah. or poem. Um, it's it's wonderful though. Uh, yeah, mm. I cannot remember all the titles, but man, they're the music just don't fail for me. Like I. I've never, as much as I don't really care for P3, uh, sorry, P3 fans, uh, but the music always slaps. Oh, man. Dude, the final boss theme on P3, it's called mm. Battle for Everyone's Souls. <laughs> and it is <laughs> it is the the poem for everyone's souls, but it's mm-hmm. also got this, uh, like, orchestral and, uh, and and rock guitar that they add to it. Uh, mm-hmm. A sort of um, techno beat, like a like a, oh, it's, it's you know it, it brings that mm-ts, mm-ts, mm-ts to it. <laughs> it just it just goes nuts. Adds in go on. You know, still got the piano. <laughs> yeah, you're. Yeah, we, we could listen to it right now, but we'd probably get demonetized. <laughs> so in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> but I I used it in my Persona Three review uh, as the the intro, the the background music for the the big montage that I try to put at the beginning of all of my episodes of the game collection, and ah uh, yeah, it it's still it's just so good. The only problem Man. is that it takes like it feels like two whole minutes to like get to the good part. <laughs> <laughs> is that right yeah so i ended up cutting that out for for hmm. my video i just get to the good part but um yeah so revelations persona that's pretty rad pretty pretty rad game my, by the way oh, go ahead no go ahead i was gonna say the our next comment is coming up here but what did you want to say by the way for anyone who is watching this right now uh i don't know what device you're using but if you're using like a web browser, you will notice that uh, YouTube had changed the layout and it so got, it is horrendous. <laughs> yeah. I hate every part of this. Oh, I man. know why they're doing it, but they're, they're making it way too extreme and like a bunch of information, like how many people are here, where are the comments? I'm like, where are the comments? They haven't uh, apparently, rolled that out to me yet. Um, uh, it's, it's going in waves and so bad yeah it's david so Vink bad. sent me uh, a picture because he he was included in one of the waves and so bad. and my gut reaction at first was ew the second one was it looks like tiktok the third it's one was so bad ew <laughs> it's so bad again i i know why they're doing it they want to push more videos and push people to go to the content you know, it, immediately instead of having it on the right side, it's going to be like right underneath. They can post mm-hmm. a bunch of videos that may interest you. I get that, but it's just the way that they're doing it. Yeah, is, uh, they're removing way too many things in favor of this, and it's just driving me crazy. Uh, but for anyone who may be uh, as confused as I am, and you're seeing this whole new layout, um, and you are watching an old um uh hit point and you're like oh how do i even get to the comments close the chat exit out of the chat hit the x and then the comments will show up so the chats and the comments cannot coexist at the same time and you can't switch them yeah you can't switch them just hit x on the chat on on the window and then you will see the comments section and all the um you know the titles and all that stuff that's all there you have to hit x yeah i know it's it's man uh, i'm sure we'll get used to it in time but for now it it does feel like i don't know like youtube's changing man and i don't like it uh you know change for the better is fine but you've got to you've got to think this through like yeah. right now um i'm looking at our uh video feed right now and yep. then it used to be that underneath would have like the title of the stream yeah. and then the channel, join, subscribe, all those fun stuff is there, right? Is it not that's there not anymore? There any- no, that's not there anymore. Oh my God. That's not there anymore. And do you want to, do you want to see what it looks like? <sighs> yeah. Do you want to see what yeah. it looks like? Are you going to share your screen? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll point out to you what the problem is. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do this. We'll, we're, we are moving on to a live review of YouTube. <laughs> okay. All right. I can switch to your screen now. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Let's see. Do, do you see it? Yes. 
Oh, this, gross. This There's is, an okay, ad so this for is Mint Mobile. Yeah, but, you know, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Like, just imagine that we're here right now. Oh, yeah, right? there's no title. Look at this. This there's... whole section right here, this whole section right here used to be, like, the title and all that stuff. Yeah. Which would still be great if it was here. I don't care if you show all the videos underneath it. Like, yeah, I get it. That's right? cool. But yeah. why would you cut out the title? Like... <laughs> It's, I mean, okay, sure. If you hover over so, the title of the or the video, actually, hang on. Oh mute, my god! Mute the stream. Let it play through the ad. I wonder if it. No, I can skip it. Okay, so if you. So here you go. It's here. There it is. Okay. But I have That's... to close out the chat. You see this? I have to close the chat. Oh. Then I can see all these things. Okay. So... Yeah. This is this is silly. Mm. Yeah. You know, all this, all these information should still be underneath. And then afterwards, if you want to post all your video, fine. I get it. Right. Yeah. I understand why. But this is just a bad move. Right. This is decidedly a terrible move. It feels, <laughs> feels like they're putting up barriers to, uh, to people subscribing to content creators on YouTube, <sighs> which is really weird. But they've because been at this for a long time, man. I just, I don't know. I, I think this is this is a terrible terrible move. But here you go. If you if anyone wants to see comments in the old video, just exit out chat, and then all the comments will show up like here. Yeah, yeah. So all right. Well, all that. Okay. Moving on to the the other comment that we got here, or one of the other comments. Uh, this mm -hmm. one comes from Model James Thirteen, who says, "Still waiting on Chain Echoes." <laughs> <laughs> dot, 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 yeah. dot, dot, dot. I looked at their, I looked at their uh, fulfillment from uh, what is the first press, and now it says Q two, twenty twenty four, and I'm like, gosh. didn't it used to say Q three of twenty twenty three and Q two of twenty twenty three, and I'm just like, hmm, bro, yeah. When did we even get the thing? We bought it a minute ago. I don't know. I, when when you can't even remember when you paid for the thing, it's like, been I barely a while. remember. I yeah. want to say it's been over a year. Oh, it's definitely been over a year. That's for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's it's so bad. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, just know that we are with you. Um, uh, but I will also say, uh, number one, do not harass the developer. Like the developer is like one guy. Yeah. In, from Germany. And he's just like, yeah, I made a game and then like I signed a thing for people to do this publishing because I just one dude and I can't, I don't know how to do all this. So, you know, yeah. and then this one company who he signed up with are just like horrendous at, you know, what they're doing. Apparently. Uh, and, and, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, feel, I, I feel bad for him because, I mean, putting out a physical over a year after the launch of the original is yeah it's pretty pretty wild stuff probably not what he wanted to do <laughs> yeah. either and uh and, and 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 that aside just like that he has no control over this guys like just just recognize that he has no control over this um don't harass him now this is not to say go harass first press either um but you know maybe just urge them to give more consistent communication i'd say be civil uh, and just Urge be like, them hey, to look, do better. Yeah, like I, I gave you money. <laughs> at, at least a monthly like update is not, you know, uh, unreasonable. Every thirty days or so, it's just like can you tell it us takes, where it takes we're five at? minutes to to put together a little statement. Yeah. You can even yeah. they could they could have Chat GPT make a statement about it. Seriously, <laughs> like, it takes nothing. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's move on to the next question here that we got from uh, Don Dom Buchanan, nineteen eighty six, who says, <laughs> "Man, love this show. Makes my time at work enjoyable. Thanks, guys. Keep up the good work." And it's it's comments like that 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 me that make me so happy, dude. That I I love to hear it. Um, and that's why we wanted to make sure that we did another video soon. Another podcast episode even though there's like two news items <laughs> we we weren't kidding when we say that we want to make sure that you guys are aware that we're still alive <laughs> okay half kidding <laughs> yeah but we, we are in fact still here um in fact uh 
you know what? I saw a couple of comments. I mean, you guys can look at it too. Don't take my words for it. But there were a couple of comments from the last video that are just like, oh my God, I love the video. I love the work that you guys do. So it's like, man, what's what's gotten into you guys all nice and making it's, it all sappy and stop it. It's weird. I'm not used to that. I, I come I'm to YouTube to, to be kindness. abused, okay? <laughs> this is this is where I come to be to be called a shill. And I, and I am not having yeah. any of that positivity in my house. <laughs> In my, yeah, in my I mean, house. when on. when you are a game reviewer or a game content creator, you're either a fanboy or you're a hater. There is no middle ground. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you're a hater for one week, and then the next week you are a fanboy. It's just, I don't I don't know, but I think y'all have like bad short term memories. <laughs> but anyways, no, I we really appreciate all love. Thank you again. All right. And uh, we've had the number up on the screen for a moment now, but if you would like to leave us a voicemail, uh, you may do so at 785-337-3805, just like Tim here. Hey, Super Derek and Bakasan. It's Toolman. It seems like indie games are just getting better and better. Uh, this year alone, we've got the Aiden Chronicles 100 Heroes, Shrine's Legacy, and Quartet coming out. My Familiar is another one I'm very excited about that I think is planned for next year or maybe 2026. A game that I just got funded on Kickstarter that I think Derek in particular would like, that I'm very excited about, is the God Shark Chronicles, which, like Shrine's Legacy, is a pixel art co-op action RPG. So my questions are, uh, what indie games are you both looking forward to the most? doesn't have to be ones coming out this year. could just be on the horizon. But which ones uh, really piqued your, your fancy? Thanks, guys. Great question. Thank, Thank you, you, Tim. Thank you for the voicemail. Um, now, I, it's the strangest thing. I feel like it wasn't all that long ago. I actually put together a list of all of the upcoming games of 2024 that I was hyped for. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of that list is very similar to the list that I've composed right before the show started uh, <laughs> <laughs> to to help with this. Um, so I actually I, I went ahead and talked to Baku a little bit about this before, because uh, the thing is, I hate to accidentally forget and uh, leave out incredible indie studios, um, mm -hmm. you know, and and I know that I've forgotten several that said, I have a list of about 18 right now <laughs> sitting in, <laughs> in this Excel document uh, that I just had to uh, to kind of just uh, shout out. Yeah, because and yeah. I have the list. So I know, Baku, if you want to chime in with some of these, feel free. Heck yeah, um, let's do it. Yeah. So starting with uh, and and this this voicemail from Tim did from Toolman did come a, a few days ago. Uh, well, a few weeks ago, because he's talking about how excited he is for Ayudan Chronicle and God Shard, mm -hmm. and we've already talked about those. But speaking of uh, Ayudan Chronicle, this is the last time I'm going to be able to include them in such a list for various mm -hmm. reasons. I yes. am looking forward to the upcoming indie RPG Ayudan Chronicle 100 Heroes. <laughs> uh, this is a game that I have been looking forward to for ages now, ever mm -hmm. since the yeah. Kickstarter was like yes. announced. Yes. <sighs> the the late and the great uh oh god just there's such an incredible team mm -hmm. uh, and i and of course of course as i'm like so hyped about this game in my mind i'm like trying to remember the guy's name and i'm failing miserably that's oh, okay yeah it's a japanese name hard to remember that's okay mm. i can't remember half the <laughs> Like Nobuo's, uh, uh, who made Final Fantasy? <laughs> it's like I can't, I oh, can't yeah. remember. Yeah. Um, and and plus we're like forty, getting yeah, close. We're just way. we're just having um, um, all kinds of <laughs> brain degeneracy. <laughs> I know. Gosh dang it! Uh, put me on the spot. But anyways, I put myself on the spot. But uh, Aiden Chronicles Hundred Heroes is just looking incredible. Um, the demo came out a little while ago and yeah yeah go go play it or i think people have started receiving their copies in the mail i saw david got a copy in the mail today mm -hmm. um i wonder how that happened <laughs> mm. <laughs> but it seems like there's some there's some uh some sort of stuff behind the scenes with those uh with those hard copies going out a little bit earlier than anticipated mm. I should keep my eyes peeled for the mail. <laughs> I think you should. Um, yeah. Of course, we got our after. Yeah. we got our good friends at Something Classic who uh, are working on Quartet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, Love that game. 
have you have you had a chance to play it yet, or no. have you only seen the? Ooh, I know you're gonna you you're gonna you gonna like this. <laughs> I know, oh, and same with my familiar. You know, mm-hmm. it's same with that. They also, I haven't played that either, but that's also one of the people that I'm really looking forward to. Forge of the Fae. Dude, mm-hmm. this has really caught my my whole attention right now. Uh, mm-hmm. This is that Breath of Fire-like that, uh, well, I mean, as far as I can tell, the design seems to be like that of Breath of Fire 3-ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's right up my alley. Same with Tears mm. of Magic, you know. Yeah, th- that similar look and feel, right? Yeah, yeah. We have for us Breath of Fire fans, we got some indies that are just seeking to kind of fill in that void that uh, mm-hmm. that Capcom is just leaving wide open. So I guess that's lucky for us, but at the same time, it hurts my soul. Come on, Capcom, do it, you cowards! <laughs> Kingdoms of the Dump looks incredible mm-hmm. as well. Uh, this is a uh, kind of an it looks like an earthbound style game you know and uh and it all takes place within a dump you play as a trash can <laughs> <laughs> it's just the the random stuff uh there's also some uh non-pixel based games though like armed fantasia and penny oh. blood oh yeah who could who could forget those guys <laughs> uh sky oceans wings for hire that's the uh the um spiritual successor to uh what was brain it? farts i know yes i know it's <laughs> the just, pirate the pirate game the yeah. sky pirate the yeah skies of arcadia skies of arcadia <laughs> it got there eventually it, the brain isn't what it used to be uh mm-hmm. and and haruka beyond the stars you want to talk yes. about that one for a second because that was one that was on your list that i i missed myself yeah, so we were talking for a minute, and Derek's just like going through all the games that he's super stoked for, and I'm like, "Yep, sounds yep, yep, that I got that one. Yep, I got that one." And then we're just going through the list, like, "Oh yeah, there's this other one." So Hardcore uh, Beyond the Stars, I think that one is slated for 2025. So we've got like another good year before we hear anything, and you know, uh, may potentially be delayed. But you know how it is with indie games sometimes. Uh, but it's got to be another year until you hear some something more substantial. Um, but for now, uh, there are some trailers out. Uh, the Steam page is up. Um, it's like a turn-based RPG. Um, it, it's got this beautiful art that's very reminiscent of uh, Ghibli Studio style, um, which uh, I, I think nowadays there are definitely more games that uh, tries to utilize that style to yeah. great effect. Um, like ever since, uh, what's that one game that uh, they actually work with Ghibli? It's like level. Oh, oh, um, yeah, level uh, five. Nino they Kuni. were working on it with Nino Kuni. Ni- yeah. Nino Kuni, yeah, Nino Kuni. Like ever since Nino Kuni, it's just like people are just. It, it just really triggered people's imagination. Like, wow, we could all make games like this, right? Um, and so I, I'm so happy to see all these like Ghibli art inspired uh, games coming out. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that's one. Uh, what's another one? I could just want to. Oh, I've got a, in. I've got a big list. Uh, so oh, yeah, Go yeah for there's. It. Uh, I, I also hadn't talked yet about Bloomtown. Another oh, Bloomtown, yes. Another one of those uh, RPGs that are kind of earthboundy. Uh, oh yeah. Shrine's Legacy. That's a bit more of like an action RPG co-op title, uh, along with God Shard Chronicles, mm-hmm. which is another you know pixel art action uh, yes. rpg co-op uh alterium shift that's one that i did an experience points video about but it's still in early access mm-hmm. but it looks like it's gonna be really good when it when it's Ooh, fully yeah. released um odd venture is also kind of earthboundy I, mm-hmm. I i have a soft spot for all the earthbound likes you know and, and all <laughs> of the, the ones that draw heavy inspiration um, mm-hmm. Then we also got Sacrifier, which is another one that's kind of like that HD 2D style pixel art mm-hmm. on a 3D plane with like bloom effects and stuff. Kind of, you know, kind of octopathy. Um, mm-hmm. uh, let's see, Hermit and Pig, uh, and uh, oh, there is a Beloved Rapture, which is uh, it's a it looks like it's a RPG maker game, but mm-hmm. it looks like they spent a lot of time and effort to make it actually like more than just an rpg maker game like mm-hmm. if you didn't know it was an rpg maker game you probably wouldn't think that it was so it looks sick along with everything else in this list um 
you also mentioned uh, Dream Channel Zero, I think. Yeah, Dream Channel Zero is an upcoming game from Odin Cat, the folks who made Max Monsters. So I am super excited for it. Um, they're, they're, they're known for making games that will make you like feel things. That, uh, feel Emotions things. that you didn't think you were capable of feeling. <laughs> and so I, I'm excited to see what kind of story. They're, they're definitely like more story forward and like gameplay second uh but they do great in what they do so uh and also the music's amazing uh the art's amazing i i i think the this new game is going to be uh the biggest game yet it's going to be more involved more things to do um a, a more a richer experience so um i'm excited for that ambition there's one more game that i did want to talk about uh, yeah. we have never talked about this one on any of the hit point uh, because there's really not a whole lot to go off of here. Um, but the game is called Threats of Time. Oh. If you can switch over to my uh, screen for sure. just a quick second. Uh, I do want to show this off. Because I think this is really cool. Uh, yeah. So you see that? Yeah. It's is it kind of hard. To, there you go. That's a lot better. It's a GIF. It's not even like a full video, but like you can see I'm, like... I'm sorry, wait, what? Did you just say GIF? It's a GIF. It's not a GIF. It's a stop mispronouncing it. It's oh my a, gosh. It's a GIF. Oh my gosh. It's a I, GIF. How have I gone through this podcast so long and I didn't know you were one of them? <laughs> I'm a GIFer. <laughs> <sighs> okay. okay. But anyways... We'll, we'll, we'll discuss this off the podcast. So Threats of Time is really trying to do the whole chrono trigger thing not just like the battle and the art style but really traveling through time and having different or at least from what i've gathered from reading through like their material is that their intention is to create a game that's really really a spiritual successor to chrono trigger not oh. just like in name and and not or just like in oh well or... yeah or visuals or like it just plays that way it's like no there will be time travel that's why it's called the threats of time yeah like this character here is from like 1080 it, and it goes back like 10 billion years or something uh, i'm just like that is extremely ambitious okay uh i don't know how they would do it but the art looks amazing indeed um, is... yeah look at all the <laughs> and they have a sense of they have a sense of humor <laughs> you can't argue against this so you know all in all i i am really excited uh for the stuff that they're doing uh, i just am hoping that they will give us something a little bit more substantial than like you know enemy art which you know it's all nice like oh look 24 ad and you know uh, and all that fun stuff and that's all great but prehistoric 10 billion bc wow yeah, so you know all, all kinds of fun stuff here uh the, the character looks incredible uh yeah i really do i i gotta have a trailer man this is, this is I, really I need exciting. a trailer yeah so threats of time if you're watching this right now we need a trailer we would love to talk about your game mm -hmm. in more proper terms but it's not a whole lot for me to talk about right now, other than all the things I have just said. Uh, so please, please let us know when you can slap something together, anything. Okay, well, if that's the case, I also got to show you uh, this other thing then. Um, it's it's another indie uh, RPG that's been in development for ever. Uh, <laughs> to to give you some some frame of reference, um, mm -hmm. this is a this is a a trailer that came out five years ago um, oh okay from some some people that i met when i was in seattle from studio mm -hmm. atma uh, atma yeah Ooh, and pretty this game is called gravastar and this mm -hmm. is uh just a little bit of footage from one of their like demo builds mm -hmm. uh so it's it's very like this is five years ago i think that the idea it's 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 very pretty but i i wonder mm -hmm. If it's just, I, I know that right now they're working on a different game to help fund this game. Last I mm -hmm. heard, so it's exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing this in actual like action. Um, I wonder if I can skip ahead to like 
like one of the the combat encounters. Ooh, okay. Like That's they interesting. have they have some like act like some real good animation chops under their belt, and I think you know, and there's some like sketching in there that you can see of like so some mm-hmm. frames of animation not fully done, but uh, it's just. I think that's a, a really cool looking game in general. Interesting. And so that's that's on my like wish list. Like I hope that that comes to fruition someday, sort of list. Because um, because I haven't heard much from them lately, but you know that's just how it goes sometimes. Yeah, that's so unfortunate. We were just talking about this a little bit earlier in the pre-show too. It's like there there were a lot of very promising. Uh, indies and this is why sometimes some folks will come in and be like hey can you guys talk about this indie or they'll like send us like an email or something can you talk about that indie uh and then sometimes our response would be like hey thanks we didn't know this exists other times our response is yeah no sorry we can't really talk about it because there's nothing to talk about there's so many 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 indies out there that are in development that just doesn't pass the threshold where mm-hmm. we can say, okay, we have serious, um, you know, uh, belief that this game will actually make it to market. Because if it doesn't, then it's it's kind of moot. Like, yeah, I can yeah. tell you that some people are making a really pretty passion project for arts. Because if it doesn't make it to market, it's just art at that yeah. point, right? So, uh, which is still and, and that's fine, own, you know. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and, and that's fine, but it just doesn't pass a certain threshold of um, materialization, I guess, is is what we're trying to get to. So uh, we certainly hope that some of these games come out because we're excited for them. Um, but things happen, you yeah. know, like COVID. If COVID taught us anything, a lot of projects oh, got, God. you know, yeah. Yeah. Lots of projects got canned over COVID for one reason or another. So it's it's um for every one fantastic indie game that you see coming out, there were like 10, 20 of them that didn't make it. That's yeah. that's the reality. So you know hopefully what? that gives you guys some uh a sense of what the industry is like. <laughs> you know, because we're doing a different format today and not really just diving into like news and stuff, we mm-hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and do something out of order and uh respond to this question that we got from Still Alive who threw out a super chat yes. here a minute ago. Uh, mm-hmm. They said they got a different question for us this week. Okay. What, in your opinion, was the best or most comfortable gaming slash office chair you have ever had to play long RPGs in? My <laughs> butt gets sore after too long. Sigh. Oh, ooh, okay. That's hard. It, it's hard because like uh, really high quality like office chairs, I think, are, I mean, the... I was going to say the sky is your limit, but really it's, it's your, your wallet. That is the limit. Um, mm-hmm. What I have found works really well for me though, is actually what I'm sitting in right now, which is not, it's not a racing chair um, here. If mm-hmm. I can, if I can switch to my uh, me cam, Hey, it's, it's me. It's a me. Super Are you daddy. sitting on a couch? Is that what's going on? Like, so just have a... it's a good question. It's a very good question. So this is actually <laughs> a uh, recliner that I mm-hmm. have. Uh, it's it's not a very expensive recliner. It's just a little wingback recliner. Uh, mm-hmm. So I can... Uh, I can recline <laughs> if, I, if, I so, if I so desire, which is mm-hmm. kind of nice. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, so, I mean, there aren't very many, uh, office gaming chairs that do that, which is mm-hmm. the first thing. Also, I have it up on casters. Uh, so like the wheels are this big around cause mm-hmm. otherwise I have a carpet in here to help de- deaden some of the sound. If mm-hmm. I didn't have big caster wheels, it would get caught and stuck on oh, everything. Yeah. So what I oh, did, yeah. this was. This was a, a pretty inexpensive uh, armchair from Amazon. Mm-hmm. When I say inexpensive, like maybe maybe $200 at most because mm-hmm. I'm a cheapskate. Uh, so I took off the legs and I mm-hmm. used a drill to drill in some uh, some two by fours that were cut to length, uh, okay. one on either side of the so so forward and backward. I have that that two by four like bracing it. Mm-hmm. And then I have those giant casters just secured to the bottom of the two by fours. Um, so essentially it, instead of having feet, I have 
very heavy duty casters. I can roll around. This is the best gaming chair I've ever had. It is incredibly <laughs> comfortable and, and not because it's just an armchair, but because of two additional things that I have. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lumbar support, uh, little, little thing there to, mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of good long-term, uh, sitting sessions is just having mm -hmm. good lumbar support. So mm -hmm. I've added that to this chair as well as a, uh, an extra butt cushion. <laughs> Cause, cause, okay. So now I'm not sitting on it. I'm a lot lower now. Uh, so it oh, is a thick boy. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a thick mat like this and mm -hmm. it has a spot under here where your tailbone goes so that it doesn't like rest your tailbone up against anything directly. Huh? Okay. So that, <clears throat> that is the combination, the winning combination that will, I think, beat any Herman Miller uh, office chair by a mile. You know, it is just, you you know, I stream for like eight hours in a in a single session. I couldn't oh, do it geez. without this. Um, so that is crazy. Yeah, it's. I mean, I'll I'll get up and I'll walk around, but I mean, yeah, this is this is, and it, and it's so much cheaper. <laughs> I've, you have no idea the number of times I've been reached out to by like Ewin racing or whatever, uh, some, some gaming chair company. That's like, mm -hmm. we want you to, to advertise our stuff. I'm like, I would like your money, but I am not going to tell people to, to try <laughs> those. They are so absolutely uncomfortable. Those, mm -hmm. those, those racing style chairs, mm -hmm. they're yeah. hard. The padding mm -hmm. is awful. Uh, it's always so just like, and and you wear through it in just a, like a, a day or two. It mm -hmm. just, it compresses so hard. And then you have these harsh angles cause it tries to look all gamery. Like mm -hmm. it's the worst. So take it from someone who had been in, uh, the car racing scene for a little bit, um, that bucket seats, which are what they're called. They're mm -hmm. called bucket seats. Yeah. You know what they're meant to do? <laughs> Keep your from falling seats, out. <laughs> yeah, bucket seats are meant to hold you in place in a moving vehicle at high speed, you know, from like an actual race car, right? Uh, that's the intended purpose. And then that style seat got popular in, you know, sports cars that are not racing cars, but mm -hmm. there are sports. So you want to look sporty. So here you go, have some racing seats, right? And then somehow... That got translated into, well, since you liked it in your car so much, let's put some, like, you know, wheels on it, and we'll have it in your office, too. And no, they're they're not for comfort. They're not, they're, 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 there's nothing gamer about it. It's supposed to no. keep you in <laughs> so that when you're making a really sharp corner, you are, like, planted in, and you're not, like, moved around, and you can actually control your vehicle. That's the point. <laughs> so the for every thing. person... Yeah, for every person who buys one of those seats, I'm like, you do know why that seat is designed that way, right? It's not for comfort. Like, no. comfort is not, no. Um, it's, now, it's the worst. And also, they yeah. have other kinds of gaming chairs. I used to have one when I was a kid. They, they're kind of mm -hmm. shaped so that they have, like, a round kind of curve to the bottom. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, like, shaped like that. Well, I... <laughs> anyways, anyways, it's it's shaped so that you can rock back and forth, and the cushion is also kind of curved as well, um, mm -hmm. and those are also super uncomfortable uh, after an extended period. Uh, honestly, it feels to me like anything with the word gaming on it is just another way of saying uh, fifty percent markup and guaranteed <laughs> to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Also, not to hate on bucket seats, like bucket seats that are well designed in a vehicle will mm -hmm. do wonder. Like, oh, yeah. but that's because it's doing what it's designed to do. Like, yeah, a it keeps good, you in place. Great quality, like bucket seats are actually quite comfortable. Uh, too bad you're not going to get that kind of quality in one of your gaming chairs, like for sure. Yeah. Um, so, I could recommend like ergonomic office chairs. Now, those okay. with like, my mom. Th that's what I'm sitting on right now. A really interesting ergonomic uh, chair that I used to love for mm -hmm. for office use. 
It was yes. one of those, if you saw it, you'd think it looked like a torture uh, contraption, though, because it's one of those <laughs> kneeling chairs. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Those so, are supposed to be good for you, though. Oh, supposed man. Supposed to be. You get used to it after a while, but it, it, mm -hmm. it it's so foreign, especially if you don't know how to use it. Uh, <laughs> but one of these kneeling chairs, look it up. The way that mm -hmm. you sit yeah. on them is you put most of your weight on, like, your knees, uh, mm -hmm. and your butt is still kind of on an angle, but you're, like wedged into position and yes. there's not you can get some with back support but mm -hmm. the one that i had growing up didn't have that mm -hmm. but uh you get like it's they're nice as far yeah, as my uh, friend swears by that uh -huh. so yeah that's that's a great one um i was gonna say if you are prone to sweating get get the er, get the office chair with like the kind of like the netted kind of like seats i think those are pretty mm -hmm. good because those are breathable yeah right um, and they still support. Um, so, but it, it does take a little getting used to it because, um, you know, even with all the support, it just feels like you're leaning on nothing. Um, mm -hmm. when in fact, like the net really does catch you. Yeah. So that's yep. about the only thing I can recommend is like, look, if, if you get, get like a good, like you don't have to go hard Miller, but you, you could get a good office chair. Like a, just a mesh. Yeah. Cause that's the other thing. Yeah. The, the mesh, mesh. Yeah. There you go. The mesh will not flatten out over time the way that like a cheap office chair cushion will the foam like the cheap the foam, foam. Yeah. yeah and and the f like the the fake leather just like flicks off yeah mm. none of that and like sticks to you none and you that. get little like flakes of like black on you it's the worst uh, yeah so mm -mm. i think i think if you and i if we were to come up with one so yeah that's something that my my chair does suffer from is that it's 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 fake leather luckily it hasn't started flaking yet but it does not have that breathability and if there's one way I, if there was any way i could add that to this chair it would be perfect so the three mm. things i would recommend breathability that that mesh sort of like non-cushion like if you look at it it looks like it's just a a, a hammock for your butt uh yeah yeah it's see-through but it's yeah. so supportive it's really nice mm -hmm. so if you can get that do it the other two things though is you know, some sort of lumbar support, specifically a cushion for your lower back. Um, and then, and then also just try to make sure that your tailbone isn't hitting anything. Cause like, it's like headphones, you know, if you have some headphone that's like touching like the part of your ear, even if it's comfortable for like, you know, the first 10 minutes after an hour or two of like touching your ear, your ears just going to be sore. You know? Yes. Yes. So it's it's just problem. like that for your tailbone too. So mm -hmm. uh, that's 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 old man gamer advice from a couple <laughs> of forty year old dudes talking about keeping your your buttocks, uh, you know, dry and comfortable for 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 long gaming sessions. That's right. I mean, couches yeah, are also good too, but they they don't often have that same lumbar support. If you do go yeah. with a couch, I like the ones that have a low back. Believe it or not. Because then you can really stretch back and, you know, as opposed to the ones that make you <laughs> kind of hunch forward when you get sucked into them, you know, mm -hmm. it's all about posture. It's true. It's all about posture. And you can't be lazy with that. That's wholly within your control. Yeah. So um, speaking of being old, uh, this is off topic now, but I was telling Derek earlier that um, I hurt my foot yesterday. Yeah. What, what, what did I you do? Did you kick know. a football? No, I didn't. I didn't. That's the problem. I didn't do anything. Did you tackle a baseball player? Did no, you? No, I didn't. I didn't. Go. I did. I, I literally didn't do anything. I went out for. So I went out to a Thai New Year festival thing. So I posted some pictures on my Discord, um, and it was really good food. And we had all the food. I got in the car. My friend drove. I didn't even drive. Okay, <laughs> I sat in the back seat. My friend drove me home. I got out of the car, and my foot just started hurting a little bit. And I'm like, huh, that's weird. You know, yeah. and then I got in and then it just kept hurting worse and worse over the night. It's gotten better <laughs> now, but I'm just like, it just started hurting out of nowhere. I and think you should just pin this on your friend. Just say, you know how bad of a driver you are? You're such a bad driver. <laughs> you hurt my foot and you didn't even do anything. <laughs> yeah. And, and and like I posted it online I mean, on, on my like friend chat group and they're like, what did you like? Did you play sport? Did you did you actually got around did you exercise like no did you hit anything did you fall did you trip like no nothing i mean nothing it's like did you hit something you're not no 
<laughs> it just started hurting on its own, and they all unanimously say, "Well, it's because it's old age." That's the only. Uh, <laughs> exp- that's the only explanation that they can come up it. with. <laughs> that can't be it, because I, because I, I feel like I'm 17 still. But, oh yeah. Oh well. Especially with the anime hair, you know, it's just it's right. Look at that. Look at, yeah. Look the at hair that. continues. It continues growing. You know, I'm not even doing anything at this point. It's just. It's just doing its thing, and I, I kind of dig yes. it. Um, my latest video actually was my last hurrah of the faux hawk. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's it's the last. It's the last. I. It was not filmed all that long ago, and mm-hmm. it was very precariously stacked on top of my head. It was big. <laughs> 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 but uh, it's uh yeah it's it's fun. I appreciate the effort. Yeah, I figure, you know, I don't I don't want there to be a continuity difference when someone's like going through watching all my Trails of Cold Steel videos and mm-hmm. then they get to Trails of Cold Steel 3 or 4 and then my hair suddenly like much longer. It's like <laughs> it's an yeah. evolution of Derek. I feel exactly. just got <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So, um okay, that that covers the comments from last week. We got the voicemail. Mm-hmm. Uh mm-hmm. hit up that that uh uh super chat just for good measure let's dive into we we actually do have like uh a, two two things on the docket three, two two three 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 okay three yeah. uh, you're adding stuff man so i no. all right all right well we have it's not news this time but it is uh upcoming games this week yeah, we're just we just want to use this as an excuse to look at the trailer and just like just get hype with you all because it's coming and yeah. it's Aiden Chronicles, of course. What? Uh, what? Oh my gosh. When <laughs> it's does this actually game come out? coming? When does it come uh, out? The twenty third. So that's in what uh, next week? Uh, next yeah, that's Tuesday. next week. Next Tuesday. Yeah. Yep. We could have talked yeah. about this next week, but no. We might not be here, depending yeah. on depending on the news. You mean, so yeah. Let's go ahead and check out this trailer and just ooh and ah together. Ooh uh, and ah. Besides, some of my friends already have the game in hand, so. <laughs> Blessed with sight am I. Look at that. And there is much that I can see. Ba 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 it's I keep forgetting that there are three protagonists. Destiny. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah, because it's uh, always like the red and blue clash. Yeah, like, there's there's scene Jowie, that we keep seeing. Jowie and uh, Ryu. And then, Ryu. Wait, that was was that Suikoden too? <laughs> First, our heroes and those closest to them. Mm. Five brave souls will reveal themselves. Hey there. You must be For the each main character? What about it? For each main character, there would be five characters that would just like come to hang out with them, is that it? No. Don't ask me how I know. But No, that's just oh uh, God, that's the, that. the, the that's the characters that were introduced in the demo when you start off uh, as the main character as one of the main characters. Ooh, I know. It's such God, a pretty it looks so good. <laughs> it's such I a pretty cannot game. believe this comes out in like a week. Yeah. And then voices most Rowdy. Yet reliable. Bandits and outlaws among them. Pretty soon, General Kogan's going to declare himself ruler of this whole land, and you can't do squat about it. Uh, Uthus, maybe he's back on the hole, but you're about to get an iron ball bashing. Is that like a combination attack? The okay, never mind. I was about to say. I see a ship sailing the sands. Oh man, shark people, Our land sharks. Land <laughs> the worst. sharks. The stronger their hearts and more enduring the bonds. Must be really forge. tough looking up all the time. Well, there are some combination attack situations there. Are. there. I, oh, yeah, wow. it, it showed a few uh, combos already. It's a magical girl. Mm-hmm. Magical girls? And she was in Aiden Chronicle Rising. It is the sound of sorceress. What magical adventures await Noah and his allies? We shall see. 
We shall see. <laughs> nice. Justice always wins. God, these characters look so good. They do. Those who chase dreams. If only Miyama San was still around to see this, man. It it breaks my heart that all their hopes and dreams hot springs of course of course in this of course classic classic it's gonna be a fishing game oh a cart game oh classic. yeah their love for their home <laughs> they will be fishing together. they will be oh speaking oh, of yeah <laughs> speaking of fishing yes yeah! it's official fishing! it's a jerry oh hey. my god bakugan bakugan yes the bonds of i think that's what that's called right no yes i think so the same can be said for these heroes. We nearly had a situation with Ivy and her runoms when she thought we were Imperial goons. And I'm still sorry about that. <laughs> Who is connected to who? A truth. Oh, dragonborn told. looking folks. But that's the fun in it. Mm. For the last time, I'm not a bandit. I'm a desperado. Okay, oh. buddy. <laughs> For now, this is all. Is a the singing. Is a young the singing is happening. What's that? Epic singing. Wish to know the oh man, of these I know. <laughs> Surely you'd rather learn that for yourself. Uh, elves. No, no. Come. Tell me about them. Tell, tell me about them. No. Nope. Disembodied voice. Mm -mm. <laughs> hey, it's Garu and Adam CJ and, and Isha. Yes. Shabui. You remember them, Ooh. right? They were in Rising. CJ was the yes. the, pro, the the protagonist. Available yes. April Pro protagonist. Ah oh, man. Ooh. Ooh. God. Yes. Cannot wait. I Only one more week. Cannot wait. Only one more week. Only one more week. <laughs> Only one more week. <laughs> Only one more week. Oh boy. Wow. That was People a ride. are streaming the full game on Twitch right now, apparently. Well, they should be very cautious about that because I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're throwing out DMCA's right and left. Um, yes. <laughs> and they warned everybody in advance that that would happen. Mm. So, you know, maybe maybe don't do that because that's also yeah. super rude. Yeah. I mean, play it maybe, but maybe don't stream it. <laughs> yeah, people people don't care. People I know. don't care. It's silly, but uh, I will wait until when the time comes for us to look at that game. And as we've talked about, of course, is coming out again on the 23rd on all uh, modern platforms, including the Switch, which was impressive. Uh <laughs> it's funny because when they released that uh, originally, like for the back rewards, they're like <laughs> the, the options were PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5. Xbox mm -hmm. One the series consoles or whatever the next place or Nintendo console is. <laughs> I I still remember that was like th that was the thing is like whatever the next Nintendo console is, because that was like three, four years ago. And it was inconceivable that the Nintendo Switch would still be the current gen. For the current Nintendo. modern console <laughs> It's a modern console, Derek. Until there's a new one, it is modern. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but yeah, uh, <laughs> man, I not much else to say about it. It's just I, I just I, I just want to play it. No, dude. <laughs> just want to get my hands on it. It is so it. exciting. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next section, which is going to be the new game that was announced. Oh, yeah. I mean, surprisingly, there's one that we, got uh, one. we do want to talk about. Yeah, we do. We In do want two to talk weeks. about this one. In all of two weeks, there was one that was worth that that we saw that we felt like com we it's compelling to talk about. So from Fennec Studio from Madrid, okay, mm -hmm announced that they will be making a new sci-fi turn-based RPG called Runa. Um, let's take a look at a trailer, and then we can talk a little bit more about it. Okay. I have not seen this before, so... Yeah. So, a Spanish uh, developer. Kind of cool. I, I like the, the different... 
different countries are like getting in on this, you know, yeah. and, and just putting their own take on things, having how their you, own how narratives. Do you say, how do you say Xenoblade in Espanol? No idea. How do you say Xenoblade in, in Espanol? You say it like this. Xenoblade in Espanol. <laughs> 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 I, I cannot wait to read the comments Dude. and having all these people correct like uh actually hi mr derek i'm from spain actually <laughs> this is how you pronounce it they'll send you a voice clip they say <laughs> my name is ignino montoya I killed my father <laughs> now prepare to say xenoblade <sighs> in espanol yeah. but seriously yeah, this, this looks incredible this game, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't want to just narrow it down to, or, or throw it in this box of this looks like Xenoblade. It does, but like in Xenoblade a good way. Xenoblade like slash in, like Zelda ish. Yeah. But that's just like. Hey, some it's of a turn based RPG. I'm way more excited now. Oh, yeah, no, this is turn based. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if this was uh, if this was one of those action RPG things, I'd be like, eh. It's sci fi, but fantasy. It's yes. like sci fi fantasy. I uh, love kind of deal. This looks incredible yeah. so far. Yeah. I'm going to need to add this to my list of indies I'm excited for. Kickstarter coming in tomorrow. Ooh. Okay. So it's. Kick, so Kickstarter hasn't started yet. Okay. The Kickstarter will start tomorrow. So, so guys, do not kickstart this thing until tomorrow. <laughs> okay. That's right. Um, yeah. I, I think so far there are like 3,000 follows on it. It looks really this, good. Yeah. Um, you know, I my initial thought was like, oh yeah, Xenoblade, because it looks like a dude wandering around in a sci-fi kind of somewhat medieval looking area. Mm -hmm. He's got a weird yeah. looking sword. You know, that's that's what made me initially think Xenoblade. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Plus, you know, beautiful. Uh, it's a gorgeous looking game. Um, so I'm excited to see more about that title yeah. when it gets see developed. What comes from it. Yeah. So again, no release date, of course, but we'll find out more. Actually, we'll find out more information tomorrow. Uh, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern time is uh, when they said that they will uh, begin the Kickstarter. So yeah, check them out. All right. Well, uh, so that does it for the in uh, for the uh, for the upcoming games. But we got some industry news, also kind of. <laughs> kind um, of. Let me let me find where's. It? Where did I? That's not the right spot. Here's the button for industry news. Industry news. Industry news. Go on. All right. Well, uh, so so this is actually hot off the presses. Keanu Reeves. He's going to be voicing Shadow in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. That's super exciting. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty neat. No one hates Keanu. He's the most lovable man next to maybe Tom Hanks. I just kind of love the idea that Shadow the Hedgehog is just going to be furry John Wick. <laughs> oh, no. With the guns and all. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's freaking perfect. <laughs> I oh my god! Suddenly, Shadow's gonna be like, what? just imagine if <laughs> I'm just imagining a situation where where that's actually the case. <laughs> just I'm gonna just I'm straight gonna up murdering people. I'm gonna message my friends right now. <laughs> One of them is a huge, huge Shadow fan, and I'm just gonna tell her that this is just for each other. But I would love it absolutely if if they just went all the way dark, just f like dark universe, dark shadow. Like let's 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 stop tiptoeing around Shadow being the the you know world famous Edgehog, and let's let's let him be a straight up murderous son of a gun, you know, <laughs> son of a g g gun. Um, yeah, so exciting for that one. Yeah, I mean, have you seen Sonic Two? With uh, Edris Alba as uh, Knuckles. Actually, I have not watched any Sonic movies. Really? No, I have not watched. I have not watched the Mario movies. I, I don't actually don't watch any movies. I, <laughs> I'm like the worst person. Well, I mean, I not agree. Even anime but... movies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, you're great, but that's okay, dude. Because um, these are not like. 
you know, uh, Academy Award winning, uh, very serious films that will change your perspective on uh, modern cinema. Uh, these are schlock, you know, but they're fun schlock and they don't, uh, they don't absolutely like throw everything out the window. Uh, I kind of think sometimes I wonder if like Sonic's decision to be CG characters inside of a movie with like real people is just weird. Uh, hmm. like, like they, they could have done the whole Mario thing and gone full CG and it probably mm -hmm. would have been just as good. I feel mm -hmm. like Sonic two, they went a bit more full CG. Uh, like the first movie was like 90, 10, 90 percent real 10% Sonic. The second one's a bit more like, I don't know, 40, 60, uh, huh. uh, 40 real 60%. Um, mm -hmm. with, with shadow though, I don't know what they're going to do, but, um, yeah. but yeah, I, I really enjoy honestly the return of Jim Carrey as a, as himself, <laughs> just <laughs> as, Didn't as he Dr. Say that he wouldn't take the same role twice. Like, isn't that, isn't that one of his thing? I don't know about that. I, I mean, he changed his mind for Dumb and Dumber, so that's fair. Uh, that's like early career John Kerry, right? Like, probably he Jim probably Carey. didn't want to be typecast, and I understand that. Yeah. Oh, Ace Ventura. Oh, okay. So fair. I don't know. I don't know. I, hmm. But he's done a really great job as uh, as this, and he's. I'm just happy to see him being goofy again, man. Doctor Robotnik's, yeah, yeah, yep, man. Um, yeah, and 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 that's all the news we've got this just all three of these news <laughs> yeah oh, yes. but you know we managed to stretch that out for an hour already and i still got a couple discussion topics that i kind of wanted to talk about anyway yeah um, let's do it all right discussion topics discussion uh, topics yeah so uh i got uh i got one here that's it's it's some inside baseball for fans of the channel and that is i know a lot of people probably didn't want to watch the cold steel 4 review uh or or might have missed it and that's because uh generally speaking cold steel 1 has had the most players and people have played that the most the number of people who play cold steel 2 is going to be a subset of players of cold steel 1 players of cold steel 3 are going to be a subset of players of 1 and 2 and then Cold Steel 4 <laughs> is similarly a subset of people who have already played 1, 2, and 3. And then, of course, there's a lot of people who are looking forward to playing those, and they're just wanting to avoid spoilers. So, yes. Uh, anyways, point being, a lot of people just aren't going to watch this one for a while, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did, in this video, do a little bit of a soft launch of a rebrand that I've been working on uh, with a few friends of mine uh, over the last few months so uh the super derek logo and everything that's going to be changing gradually uh gonna be putting out a, very gradually um it's gonna be changing a little bit here uh just around various other places but i want people to be able to still see when it's me making videos so it's got to be kind of a gradual thing before i eventually shift over to the new logo on things like thumbnails and and uh the channel banners and stuff like that so if you're wanting to see what that kind of stuff looks like uh you know, it's it's a multifaceted approach to like a new intro. So it's got to have uh, the Super Derek logo that looks kind of like a CRT coming into full resolution, uh, has a background uh, track that was uh, generated or not generated. It was created by a friend, Eric Ladd, who you may know from uh, Retro Game Remix, hmm. uh, who made an incredible Earthbound soundtrack uh like tribute album highly recommend you check out his whole channel he's incredible um but yeah he did that for me switch wicked are helping with like the the branding and the the logo redesigns um and i feel like it's just a, a little bit more fitting especially now that i no longer have the 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 you know big old faux hawk <laughs> to uh to, to make me look distinguished uh mm -hmm. now i think it's just gonna be a little bit more uh thematically appropriate for the RPGs that I'm going to be talking about. So um, that's that's the first part that, uh, that I kind of wanted to, to talk about. Just kind of nudge people over that way if you haven't seen the video already. Um, but I also understand because it's also going to be pretty spoilery for people who uh, have not played Cold Steel 3. So uh, aside from that, I'm also starting a playthrough of Lufia 2, Rise of the Sinistrals over on Twitch. Uh, we've gotten a 
few sessions under our belts right now. We're about 10 hours or so in, and right now I'm just in the middle of this grind to defeat a boss that you're not supposed to be able to defeat on your first playthrough. Because <laughs> that's how I roll. Because mm -hmm. there's missable loot, and I want that loot. Okay. I'm coming for that loot. So, uh, yeah, that's... That's kind of what I got going on right now, and uh, and so far it's been a lot of fun, and I think that'll be a video that everybody might be able to enjoy, because you know if you if you want to play Lufia too, you already have probably, um, mm -hmm. unless you're me. <laughs> it's, my, it's my last my last classic <laughs> Super Nintendo RPG that I've never played any of, and it's just been oh a real fun experience so far, dude. Okay. Anyway, what have you yeah. been up to lately? Man, still playing, still playing through like a dragon, still playing through infinite wealth. Um, oh yeah, how's that coming? I recently finished. I finished something. <laughs> I, like I finished a game. Of what did I finish? What was I playing just before infinite wealth? Oh my god, I cannot remember. But you know what? Uh, Unicorn Overlord was super good. Nice. I, 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 that's, that's, that's the game that I finished like off stream. I just played it by myself. I, I, I got this thing where I really don't like playing strategy game. Um, this is a lot of backseaters like, oh my God, you won't believe the amount of backseating <laughs> that happens when you play a strategy game. Um, but I um, wish I could say yeah. I was surprised. Yeah. Um, so I just decided to play off stream and man, that game, just to put it into perspective, right? Uh, I think what, uh, FF7 Reborn sold like 2 million copies. Yeah. Which is, you know, it's very great. good. Yeah. Uh, and Unicorn Overlord sold 500,000 copies. Yeah. That's like right? a quarter of the, of yeah. seven. So that's awesome. But that's it's, really it's good. Definitely way less than a quarter of the budget. <laughs> I guarantee you it's going to be less than a quarter of that so mm -hmm. if you want to talk about return on investment like unicorn overlord it's, it's going to be a lot more than um final fantasy um and it's just and and the number's still growing right like there's a lot of people still have lot, like heard about the game and they're like oh is it really that good oh, i don't know maybe i'll pick it up well when it goes on discount there's always those people right which by the way it is on discount um so uh if you have been on the fence about unicorn overlord you don't know like i don't know man like strategy games i don't know if i really uh, it, it, like the strategy part is really intricate but mm -hmm. also pretty simple to pick up yeah. they've done a lot of things to make it easy for a newcomer while if you want a challenge you can certainly have a challenge too like it's all within your control how um you know much challenge you would like uh in that game so uh it's pretty good um so and that's so sort of people who are interested in strategy games um what was i playing before final fantasy 7 maybe no, I didn't play Final Fantasy Seven yet. I've been meaning to, but I cannot for the life of me remember what I was doing before Unicorn Overlord. Can you so, explain the combat in Unicorn Overlord? I've heard it explained, but it sounded so odd. Okay, um, let, I'll, I'll, I'll give you like a quick version of it, right? So you've, you're you're on this map, okay, and for every stage you have a starting base, okay, and it's kind of like capture the flag, right? You have multiple enemy base that you need to capture okay and there's always like a boss or some kind of enemy that's stationed in these like you know key uh points right key bases right mm -hmm. in the map and when you move your units over is real time moving towards them and once the two unit collide in the little map they go into battle okay okay so it becomes a turn-based rpg at that point or no 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 it becomes like a, a gambit kind of RPG. So you set the behavior ahead of time. Oh, okay. Kind of like yeah, and kind of like Final Fantasy 12 gambits. Got it. Yes. There's there's no real time control during the battle. You all the weapons, all the skills from the class, they all have strength, weakness, all kinds of things, positioning. You can kind of change the positioning of the characters mm -hmm. uh, and that will change something uh, of the unit and then they'll go in and they'll just kind of like duke it out without any actual control and in the battle. How long right. does that take usually? To do what? The battle yeah. itself? Yeah. I uh if you so 
under normal circumstances, it's like maybe a 20 seconds, 30 seconds affair. Okay. Uh, if you can always fast forward it by holding a button, okay. or you could just skip it altogether. So if you just want to see a thing or two, it's like, yeah, no, I changed my mind. I don't want to watch this anymore. Skip. Okay. Uh, just completely skip the whole thing. We can just fast forward the things. Like, yeah, I want to see it, but I just want to get to like this one part later on. Yeah. Uh, or I want to see it play out so that I can see like how I can uh, strategize better or like improve this squadron because it's not doing something. It's not behaving the way that I want it to. Something's off. I need to see what it is. Then you can just fast forward and get to the part that you. So is this a see. game for coders basically? Like. Yes, got to got to program your, very your, much your strats. Programming light, yeah, it is programming light. <laughs> Interesting. So it's like, it's like if programming was an, an RPG. And yes, that's, and that will appear to appeal to certain kinds of uber nerds. Uh, <laughs> Maybe that's why I like this so much. I'm like, oh my god, this is just programming. Yeah. There's a lot of like, I mean, it doesn't. They don't actually do if else, but mm -hmm. like it's implied. Yeah, like goes there's certain action that goes down the list and the character will search through the action and take the one that they can the first one that they can i see and then yeah and if it cannot then it'll move on to the next action and so on and so forth so okay. you have to set conditions so it plays exactly the way that it reacts to stimulus exactly the way that you want that character to or that team in fact react to the enemies the way that you want them to is okay. how you actually play the game yeah so, so it's kind of like go. a turn-based rpg but it's one that you've already played by the time the combat starts in a way, in a way. yes in yeah. a way yes yeah uh and so you move the characters and it's, it, the rest is just really just capturing bases and capture the flag uh that's that's all it is and the shortest stage was like five seconds i've had one stage that literally lasted five seconds from start to finish all right. <laughs> I, you know what and dude yeah. i i'm i am sorry to do this i need to run uh real quick and I'll be back. And so you, you you go ahead and host for about uh, a minute. Oh, yeah, sure. All right. Let me just talk to people. All right. Who are here. Uh, Messagex says, I'm 56 hours into UO, probably about three quarters done, trying to do everything. So likely have a good few dozen more hours at least, but loving it. Glad to hear it. Alex has no interest in UO. It's not made for everyone. And that's just the thing. Like, I'm raving about it, but let's just, let's just be very clear. Uh, our stance is always this, and that is there are a hundred kind of games for a hundred kind of people, uh, you know? <laughs> so it, it, it's what it is. is Super Baku RPGs now? Yes, it is now back to Super Baku RPGs. But which, by the way, if people want to come hang out for a little bit uh, later on, I will probably stream on Twitch after this. Um, I think I'm going to play a little bit of... Um, I'm going to play a little bit of uh, Infinite Wealth. So if you guys want to come by to hang out for a minute. Yeah, believe it or not, uh, Yakuza is now a turn-based RPG, which I think it's still shocking to a lot of people. It's like, Yakuza, you mean that like Japanese GTA? What does that have to do with RPGs? Like, boy, you really haven't been paying attention. <laughs> it is now a turn-based RPG game. <laughs> and it has been since the last title. Um, so yeah. Now, Poo Poo, I know. I know it's 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 it, it and, and sorry that I'm not trying to imply that either, but it's just uh, a more of a general statement that you know it's it's just not for everyone, um, and that that goes for pretty much every single game in existence. Period, no exception. Um, it's just like Final Fantasy, like a lot of people are like, ah, I'm not really liking this. So, yeah, well then the game is not made for you. It's really just that simple, um, unfortunately uh you know and and it may feel like a betrayal to like a long time fan i i get the frustration like man i've been a final fantasy fan for you know 10 20 30 years and oh my god it just feels like they're doing me dirty and i'm like yeah i get it but like you know there's a changing trend and stuff it's it, it just happens that this is just the reality of a long running series. Uh, we've talked about that before in previous podcasts too, like the different strategies that companies can take to uh, appease um, old fans while attracting new fans. Uh, there are different strategies. Um, Square Enix has taken a certain kind of strategy. If you look at Pokemon, Pokemon takes a different strategy. 
um, you'll see different series do different strategy. And I think it's really interesting on how uh, different companies battle this exact same problem. It's a good problem to have. I mean, that implies that you have a series that is popular and long running and people are passionate about it, right? So, uh, so which unit was your most OP in UO? Uh, I had two Wyverns, uh, Elf Girl, Warlock, just Rex everything. Uh, I think most of my units are pretty OP. Uh, I have a Wyvern um, dive uh, thing that I set up. There is a Trinity staff set up. There is the main characters team that basically is like a, a all utility team that can go up against just about anything regardless of situation. It's not OP, but it will pretty much win against anything. Uh, the, the two elf girls, uh, the princesses with their uh, elemental something, I forgot what it's called. Um, and, and this is like an all attack that's not magic, so the magic reflect does not work against them. Uh, it's it's a lot of stuff, but mm. basically I've gotten it down so like every one of my team just steamrolls uh, <laughs> the the game. So There is yeah, something it, about those kinds of games where you can just kind of min-max your team to... Oh, well, yeah. I, I've called it like ludicrous efficiency. That's one of the things <laughs> I love about the Trails games is, mm -hmm. is just how it's fun to break the game. And I'm and it's incredible when game designers acknowledge that and they facilitate that. Like they give you enough tools to be able to like, all right, if you if you understand the system and if you can get the items and the things required, mm -hmm. you can and if you have the you know, the know how, if you can and, figure and it time. out. Yeah. yeah. And to, to and put the... toward this, then then you can make this like you can make this game you know, not even a challenge. You can <laughs> steamroll it, and that's so much fun. Like when when the game lets you win, you know, like it, yeah, it's like you know the Breath of the Wild designers. They were like, mm -hmm. you know, we have this debugging tool, but it turns out that like cheating with the debug tool is just in and of itself really fun to do. Therefore, this is now an ability <laughs> in the game. Like, right. It's it's the ability to let players you know just have fun have fun exactly yeah we talked about that too in previous show but it bears repeating a lot of the developers nowadays uh i think they have i think it's partially the fans fault too maybe reviewers like us us the re reciprocating public right like yeah. the companies create a game they create a thing they send it out to the wild and then we give them reviews and 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 they take these reviews as feedback and then they make their next game right the, the general cycle is how mm -hmm. it works right yeah and when you when when they when they make a game and it's well received you will see a lot of people talk about the art the music the story right and that typically is and 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 I maybe I'm also you know perpetuating that but I we, we seldom talk about how much fun it is because it, when it comes to a great game it's 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 almost like by default it is fun so we don't maybe like emphasize on it enough but we'll be like man the story was incredible and the soundtrack and the art and that's always the thing that comes first yeah but when it comes down to it for a game the most important element is actually whether or not it was fun did you have fun there are there are some <laughs> games that I do play less because they are fun and more for the story. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for for instance, uh, there's an entire genre the the entire story uh, or the uh, what are they called the the visual novels. They yeah, are yeah, yeah. they are stories that you enjoy and and you get to go along for the ride. Mm -hmm. Fun. I mean, some of them don't even have gameplay. I, I see that's the thing. I don't count visual novels as games. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, what are you talking about? No, visual novels are not games and we can talk we can They're just literature with, with trim. Yeah. I mean well, they can because be because there's because there's I mean, if there is play, then it's it has play elements, right? Yeah. But it's not the focus, then it's not a game, right? Mm -hmm. But if there are certain things, there's certain games where like there's a heavy visual novel element, but there's enough gameplay like, like what persona. is that um no i was thinking uh, 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 uh 
Okay. I think Persona has enough gameplay for it to just be a game. But what Curse I mean more is like, it's like almost 50-50 novel and tactical RPG, right? How about, like, how about Corpse Party, the original? Corpse uh, Party? I was... It's definitely a game because they're they're losing conditions. Like yeah. you could get caught by the ghost. You can pick the wrong thing. You'll get bad ends. Those are losing conditions. Yeah. Like there's a win lose condition at least. That's like the basic of a game. There's got to be some win lose condition. Without that, it's just a visual novel. You're really just reading. Like that's it. I got gotcha. you. Um, so yeah, but I I think um, I, I I think it's. The fun aspect. So I I think companies like especially like I, I hate picking on Square Enix. Poor Square Enix. Poor giant corporation that I keep picking on. But I, I don't are think they that giant it. though anymore? I mean they have a lot of IPs, but but relatively speaking, yes. Okay. I mean not to Western country. I mean the Western companies per se, but like just in 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 their respective like playing feel i guess because you, you forget that square enix owns a lot of other things like publications and they have different divisions and stuff so it's not That's just true. like the gaming um i just know that but, they seem to have been like hemorrhaging a lot of money lately and i'm just oh, wondering yeah. how much of that has chipped away at their you know mega corporation status so can I discuss that for a second? Yeah, do, let's. do we have time? Yeah, we got because I thought about that the other day. Of course, let's discuss it. We got let's nothing discuss. else to do. <laughs> I, I actually thought about this the other day. Yeah, right. I, I was thinking about this the other day uh, because it, it all came. It, it's going to come full circle. Someone was asking me about Unicorn Overlord, mm -hmm. right? And and I'm like, oh yeah, I absolutely love the game. Um, and and we we got to the point where we were talking about all the good stuff and again i was like music arts uh gameplay all all great and then like well what were some things that you didn't like about it and then i i thought about it and i'm like you know there were a couple of things that i wasn't thrilled about and i was listing them out and i'm like wow actually it, it was quite a bit of things that i didn't care for um hmm. but overall it's still a really good game in my mind yeah um, but that got me thinking with the amount of things that I didn't particularly care for. And I'm like really choosing my words to say that I like, I didn't hate it. Um, but I, I could have done without it, or I felt like they could have done better. Um, with, with the amount of like things that I had to say about it, it's about the same as like some of the more recent Square Enix games that I've been a lot more critical about. So then I thought, like, am I just being unfair to Square Enix at this point? Like, why am I like this? And and I'm way more forgiving to a Vanillaware game. And it, and it suddenly clicked for me. It's like, you know why Square Enix is just doing so bad right now? Like, at least one of the main reasons. No, what's that? That is all connecting now. Like... But what the the main one of the main it's not the main reason it's one of the main reason is that they really don't have the goodwill of their fans anymore, and yeah. that's huge. Oh yeah, even here in the so, chat right now, like some people are just like, <laughs> "I'm done with Square yeah, Enix." I'm so done with Square Enix. Yeah, mm -hmm. they just don't have the goodwill, and, and that you. goodwill goes Alex. a long way. <laughs> like, you know, when you when you get a game, like if you like the company, like Vanillaware, yeah. like they're beloved. They come over thing, even if it's not the best thing in the world. Yeah, you would be way more forgiving subconsciously. You'll be like, you know what? Hey, do better next time. You know, I'm still rooting for you. You, you guys are great. Just, just keep doing you. I, you, you would focus on all the things that you love and so much less on the things that you didn't like. When it comes to Square Enix, it's like I'm afraid to like the thing that you sent out because. If it's successful, you turn it into a mobile game. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if it's not successful, you just bleed money. So it's like a lose lose situation that I don't know how to help you. Like, it, I, it's, I, hard I... <laughs> to, it's hard to figure out how to help Square Enix at this point because they do it to themselves, you know, or, or they do it to us. Um, it's, it's like it's a vicious cycle. <laughs> sure. Part of it is, part of it is, you know, what have you done for me lately? You know, that's mm -hmm. that's like part of it is, is obviously like what have they done lately that we love? 
Well, right now, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two is doing particularly well. People Star seem to really Ocean Two, like it. Star Ocean um, Two, but um, yeah, Octopath Two was pretty good. I mean, in in recent, oh, yeah. in like in the last two three years, Octopath Two um, did yeah, Octopath was great. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course now Vision of Mana that's coming. Other than the whole Net East thing, yeah, uh, that's, it's, yeah. it's shaping up to be really like. We've we we've, we've heard what you liked about Trial Mana. Here's some more. So but I like the approach. But but for every one of these things, like we can we can name one <laughs> other thing. Like uh, what was the the NFT thing that they were gonna do with the uh, Parasite Eve? Uh, no, it wasn't Parasite Eve. Oh, was it not? No, people just thought that it was gonna be Parasite Eve. It was like symbiot symbiosis or something. S Symbiogenesis. Yeah. Symbol Genesis, yeah, which sounded like a Parasite Eve thing. If anyone's ever played Parasite Eve, if okay. not, we're not gonna spoil you. But it, it sounded like, oh, okay, is this a new Parasite Eve? Everyone is super excited, and then Square Enix is like, uh, no, I, 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 actually, it's uh, it's, it's, a, it's an okay. NFT even project. <laughs> even more recently, like, so they do something good. Here's Chrono Cross. And, and like, yay, we have Chrono Cross. It runs mm -hmm. at 15 frames per second. And people are like, no, you know, WTF. Here's, yeah. here's Chrono Trigger on PC. Yay. It looks like crap. No. <laughs> and then to they their fixed credit, it. They, and they, they did fix it they years fixed, later. They fixed it so, <laughs> yeah. so well. It is now the definitive way to play. Yes. But like, so it's mix, just mix, mix it's, bag. Uh. It's a, it's just evidence of the pattern of, of how they do things, you know? Uh, yeah. But I mean, at this point, it feels like there's a lot of companies that kind of do that. Uh, Atlas is one of them, you know, where it's it's always it's, you know, one step forward, one step back. Um, right. Lately, they've taken a couple steps forward. Uh, but then, you know, they also re-released Persona 3 Portable right before announcing Persona 3 Reload. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. OK, I, I, I appreciate it, but. Was this really just like a, a, a low effort cash grab before they couldn't do it anymore because of reload? Mm -hmm. I wonder about that. And and I'm pretty certain that it is. I gave them benefit of doubt and I was like, maybe they're trying to do this to test the water. But given how quickly they came out with reload, it's like, well, yeah, this was well into development yeah. by the time that you've decided to re-release like mm -hmm. P3P. So is calculated yeah yeah so, so even even yeah. some of my favorite developers i feel like the number of of developers that i have up on a pedestal right now is few um yeah. and and i guess at the end of the day that's really what it comes down to is corporations are not our friends uh our only friends are indie developers it's mm -hmm. <laughs> true it's true both but it's both true. metaphorically and and in in reality <laughs> like <laughs> a corporation a corporation's entity, okay, it's, it's an it, it's, it's a thing that exists. It's mm -hmm. a money. It's it's primarily a money generating. It's the prime directive: like, make money. Yeah, is to make money. And, and if you can anything, make money by doing things that people like, then do that. And if you yeah. can make things by doing things that people don't like, do that too. Mm -hmm. And that's how you yeah. end up with Square Enix or yeah. Sega, who with. Uh, uh you gotta toku uh what was the the dlc for new game plus like <laughs> yeah what rgg yeah yeah i said where, where the new toku. game plus is now uh now on locked behind dlc and like it's such a bad move this is such a stupid move guys See, like but we still Studio. we still like them right now yeah but in 15 years of 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 maybe some similarly like you know crappy decisions like of like i mean that was the first chink in a in a in a really good set of armor as far as i'm concerned um the, the they can they can square recover enix, yeah the thing with square enix is i feel like their strategy like the their whole persona in this like gaming space mm -hmm. is um they can't make up their mind on About what they want they, they want to do both yeah, yeah they want to do both they want to make money like we are making like dollars okay versus here where are your friend and we want to make great games and it cannot be both mm. 
It, it cannot be both. They they want to be both, but it cannot be both. I right. feel like they just have been having an identity crisis for a long time. <laughs> um, yeah. Where, and I mean that in a few ways, like they didn't know that they were the JRPG company for a while. <laughs> yeah. And, and sorry, I, and I do want to clarify before I yeah. move on, be- okay. before folks are thinking like, so what I mean by that actually is, you know, can, can they make great games and be profitable? Yes. Can they uh, make a ton of money? and also make good games yes uh but those two cannot be the focus at the same time is what i mean like that the strategy on the things that they do has to be around that sort of like leading principle right okay. so if their principle it's a, it's is a conflict of two different leading principles that's that's correct yeah okay. so it, you have to put something first and then something second mm-hmm. but they can't both be first and and what are the two that I mean. you're saying uh, just for the sake of a clarification because i i haven't fully cut that either Sure. It's so it's either they want to be like um, Hoyo and just be Genshin Impact and just like we're going to make a billion dollar. OK, we're going to make a game that will just generate cash. And that is our prime focus. We're not trying to appease the fans. We're not trying to make a game that doesn't make money or makes less money. OK, yeah. so we're going to go full in live service and we're going to make a really good game. Um, we could go all in, okay? Yeah. Or, uh, you know what? Forget live service. We're going to focus on making these titles that our fans really like, mm-hmm. uh, and hopefully they will give us money for it uh, and support us. Uh, more of a, um, let's say for lack of uh, comparison, uh, uh, a vanillaware, um, you know, uh, way of going through. Because they're, they're like product first and money second. Okay, yeah, like yeah. they will go bankrupt trying to make UO and 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 coming out and be like, well, God, we gee golly, we really hope you love our game enough to keep our company afloat afterwards, right? <laughs> and so far, so good. Mm. Um, yeah. Or you could be Hoyoverse with uh, Genshin Impact and just be like, yeah, no, no frill. You know that we make this game. It happens to be fun, but seriously, we're yeah. here to make money. So they've guys, got okay. They've got like yeah. two different paths that they're trying to follow at the same time, but that ends up pulling them into a third path that isn't really a successful one. It, it's hurting, yeah, because it's it's kind of kicking themselves. Like, they'll make a game that the fans like, and then they'll turn around and turn that into a money generating, which conflicts with the previous, like, um, you know, sub- objective, if you will. Mm-hmm. So you can't lead with both. You have to lead with one and have the one other one follow, right? Yeah. Um, but they're trying to lead with both, and so they are failing left and right because they can't do either. <laughs> it's really interesting the subject of like what of how goodwill with a company kind of affects our perceptions of them. Um, oh, absolutely. I mean, I guess that's it's a hundred percent about goodwill and perception, but um, it just raises a really interesting question of like how do they even come back from where they are? Like without, I mean, I guess without just releasing nothing but bangers for three, four years. Mm-hmm. It's hard. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If 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 it was up to me, right? Like if if you if you ask me what do I want to see from Square Enix moving forward, um in in a in a viable way and not just like, well just make games that I like and, <laughs> and you know, like no, yeah. and I mean like in a business viable way. Um like Start listening to fans' feedback. Forget your live action games. I mean, not live action. So live service games. Forget yeah. your live service games. Okay, just yeah. just stop, stop, stop with your gotcha games. They don't know how okay. to make them in a way that people want to be a part of them right now. Yeah, and the only live service game that they should keep going is FF14, honestly, because people people well, like because... what Yoshi P is doing. Yes. So it's fine. I was gonna say um, they know how to do that, but yeah, other just, things just not really. L- let that happen build that goodwill and, and and have it so that I'm not afraid to like, like your product because that disappointment that comes with like, you come with a new IP. Let's say they come with new IP, right? Tomorrow mm-hmm. they, they announce a new IP. Everything is gorgeous. They've got these veterans working on it. It sounds like a Square Enix move. Okay. You see the art, you see, you hear the music. Oh, Nobuo Uematsu is, coming back out of retirement to make these like 
like these amazing scores and you're just like supercharged excited yeah and then the back of your mind immediate is like oh my god what are they how going are they to going to this? ruin this yeah <laughs> how are they going to ruin this right yeah. and until they can get rid of that thought from all the fans like until they can rebuild that trust forget about trying to make like big money like they've lost all that goodwill you have to rebuild that trust again so that's what I think they need to do. Admit, acknowledge that they messed up. That whole NFT thing, that's stupid. Just just walk away from it and just be like, yeah, that was a bad idea. Just yeah, just say it. it. Yeah, just own it and be like, yeah, we're going to try to do better. They have new leadership now. They have a new CEO. Use this opportunity to just be like, yeah, that was a bad idea. We're going to move away from that. It's not hard. Just yeah. say it. You know, but they're straddling. They're like, they're too scared to say, oh, the NFT, uh, maybe it was not. A, I mean, have you heard anything about the symbiogenesis? No, because they know it's a bad idea. The um, cloud figure, remember some time ago, we were making fun of them for making a cloud figure with an NFT that's attached to it. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Well, now there's a non NFT version because why? Because they're stepping away from NFT because they know it's a stupid idea and it's hurting Good. them way more than it helps. Um, but but they just won't they just won't acknowledge it and I think it's silly, um, yeah. But anyways, well, it's, how would you save Square Enix? <laughs> okay, I think I would look for some of the classics that I've been neglecting, and mm -hmm. you know, <sighs> things that come to mind. Obviously, like right now, I think they should have some information on kingdom hearts the next the next kingdom hearts that's that's a big money maker for them it has a huge wild rabid fan base and they just need a <laughs> solid entry in it um right like a just a, a universal maybe even a just a solid entry point also mm -hmm. maybe not a reboot but just just something that's like all right newcomers can come in here and they'll they'll understand everything because it's a new entry point that's the probably the first is is just that and let's reel back uh it doesn't have to be triple a let's focus on a few double a titles visions of mana is a solid example of kind of what i'm talking about mm -hmm. um you know let's see what else have they not touched in forever chrono i wouldn't touch for a while i i well, would they're trying to push okay so this is a series that maybe people have forgotten but saga I know they've been pushing Saga yeah, pretty hard. They're pushing Saga hard right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Saga's weird, though. Um, they need to push Parasite Eve. I feel like Parasite Eve is prime for like a good Western like market release. Like yeah. they're, they're searching for something to sell to the West. I'm like, Parasite Eve is perfect. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they're working so hard like they were trying to do that uh, remember that one game that they hired artists from um metal gear to work on it's part of the um front mission like universe supposedly yeah I, remember uh, that one it was so unmemorable no. that i honestly cannot even remember it bombed so hard that <laughs> we left alive thank you so much left oh alive God. yeah yeah That's... that was the thing remember yeah so no, i i kind of don't that's how bad it is <laughs> you could show me the trailer and i'd be like oh this looks interesting huh. yeah and and i thought it was interesting too because you know, i'm like are you okay you know square enix is trying to dip into um you know the the metal gear solid money right because uh uh konami's not so okay there's an itch and they're trying to scratch it i thought that was a smart move had they made a good game yeah but they didn't um i think so, i think that yeah <laughs> recovering though is is less about what square enix does at this point it's more about what they don't do at this point yeah because they, they have because they are yeah. doing things that we like octopath mm -hmm. of course they're they're yeah. probably working on octopath 3 uh mm -hmm. uh you know they're probably working on lots of things that i want to play and and will enjoy uh, it's just they need someone to come in and just say, we need to prune some of these projects that we've got in the works to keep us from sticking our foot in our mouths. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I and I and I think I'm not the person to say, yes, these are the, the steps I would do to be successful. Uh, mm -hmm. 
but I think they need to have somebody who's in place to say, all right, they need a, they need somebody in PR. <laughs> That's what they need. They need somebody who says, okay, this project, this is dumb. <laughs> just, just ignore this. Just, just stop. Cut it. <laughs> just, just no more, no more NFT. Mm-hmm. Um, no more games as a service, and just focus on single player quality first player uh, single player experiences. Maybe, maybe co op. That'd be kind of cool. The 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 really profound thing is that I the the basis of a strategy is what you don't do is true, and if you basically just nailed it. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, they're, they're doing too many things. Like maybe they should focus on what not to do. Like maybe don't do half the things that you have and then just fail and just continue to ruin the goodwill. Because <laughs> even because even when they do things that aren't bad, but they are even just mediocre, like mm-hmm. Tokyo RPG Factory, turns out I, f- I feel like that diluted the brand a little bit there because it was... Square Enix's name attached to this project, and mm-hmm. if you played it and it was meh, then in your mind that is just one more meh experience that didn't uh, didn't leave an impact on you. So, yeah, that that I think that was probably one of the biggest mistake with Tokyo RPG Factory is the fact that they actually tagged their name to it. Mm-hmm. Like, had they not done that, yeah, as they like would have own... probably done, yeah. Just this own small little indie studio making the stuff, it would have been much better. Yeah. Um, yeah. But and unfortunately that was not the case. Forspoken, yeah. See, Forspoken was another attempt for Square Enix to say, how can we make that Western dollar? How do we connect with our fans with an IP that speaks to our non-Japanese gamers? Because that's where the money is at, right? But um, for, that's for, the from thing, their though. perspective, yeah, anyways. Maybe. Yeah. But that's the thing, though, is that their Western fans love them for their Japanese content. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that they don't listen, so, uh, you know. know. Yeah, but they, they maybe they saw GTA. The, here's the thing about Square Enix, okay? They see other companies, and they're just like, how can we do this for ourselves? Is kind of the mantra for the last, like, 10 years. Look at all the games that they come out, left alive. How can we make our own uh you know how can we make our own uh metal gear solid right you know a lot of these other games uh babylon falls like how do we make our own uh holy verse you know like how do we make our own super popular live service games like how do we make our own gta how do we make our own that's all they want to think about they want to look at the highest grossing products do you suppose and just be like how do we make a square enix version do you suppose you babylon's know? fail would have been a little bit done better if they had embraced the the waifu strategy <laughs> oh babylon fail there, there are too many things to it say looked, about it looked it looked a little dull people hated little... the art people hated the art direction from the get-go and they just didn't listen yeah so i don't know what else to tell them like the thing about these games like for example like for spoken to is they they have all these demos they have all these things they release that they ask for fans like uh you know feedback fans give them feedback they ignore it and then they just keep going and i was just like well then what was the point of all that like is, is it your ego like i don't know what it is but i think they they're just it's weird I, <laughs> ignore it i think square enix <laughs> is abstaining from the waifu wars and it's hurting them in the process <laughs> like part of me really feels like that and and, they, and I, don't whole, I don't have they a whole I don't have a whole lot of in. evidence. I don't have a whole mm-hmm. lot of evidence for this, but I I do know that uh, it seems like uh you know, at least on the YouTube verse, if mm-hmm. your thumbnail doesn't have a waifu on it and in this circle, that video doesn't get very many clicks. Oh, Hasmundo, put a hot guy on it. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Don't let's not let's not neglect I mean, the husbandos. And you know? and click through rate is one thing on YouTube, but like click through rate on a on a on a on a video game, mm-hmm. like if if your if your art isn't bringing people in, you know, I don't know, man. That's I I hate to say it like that, but 
a lot of a lot of RPG fans out there are shallow. <laughs> just really into hot chicks. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. Uh, I, I I'm me. a fan. I'm a fan too, but like Yeah. Well well aware. Especially <laughs> like I told you that I've been like into this whole like whole VTuber space and like let me tell you there why is there no this... ugly VTubers, huh? <laughs> There, there are, there are, there, oh, there definitely are, there definitely are. No, okay. it's, uh, th there was this one VTuber, like, I, I, I won't say who, but there was this one VTuber that came out, uh, very nice, like, lady, uh, who is the person behind it, uh, super talented, sings really well, um, everything's great, they got the making of, like, a top-tier VTuber as far as, like, popularity is concerned, Every, she's got everything going for her. Okay, great sense of humor, everything. Mm -hmm. But her model looked really bad. And I mean really bad. Like, it, it, there's nothing wrong with the art or design, but something about it just gives you that, like... Uncanny. Uncanny Valley thing. And mm -hmm. it's, like, well known that this is a weird Uncanny Valley thing, okay? Now, fast forward a year or so after she debuted, a year and a half or so she debuts, and she got a version two of the model that looks more like a contemporary, well-made waifu model. Okay. Yeah. And all of a sudden, her popular just shoots up. Well, for another like, you case can't study, tell me another case <laughs> study not. here. Mm -hmm. um, let's let's take a look at this little known uh, little franchise here in the West of uh, mm -hmm. it's this this game that's uh, kind of low stakes, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Atelier, you know. Yeah, Atelier. Okay. And then, and then suddenly, <laughs> and then suddenly, all of a sudden, all these dudes are interested in this game called Ryza. <laughs> what the heck mm. is this? I don't. I don't know. Mm. There's just something about the <laughs> something about this particular series, as opposed to all of the others that uh, you know. And if you're interested, if you played Ryza and you never played any of the other Atelier games until now. <laughs> This is why. <laughs> this is mm -hmm. why it's it's looking at all of you. Shame on all of you. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Let's, let's be real. I haven't played any of the Atelier games either, but I also <laughs> haven't played Ryza. So, and I want to, and I will, but I haven't yet. So, I'm still gonna ride this high horse for a few minutes longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but to be fair, um, I uh, uh, not to be fair, but just just so you know, uh, I, I I do think Ryza would be more of your. Uh, if you have to pick an LTL game, I think Ryzu would uh, fit your profile a little Probably. bit more. Not not because of the waifu, okay? I promise. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not how I okay. think of you, Mister Derek. Well, thank you. But no, but because the turn based battle is actually uh, a little bit better, it's a little bit more focused. Like they yeah. really tune the battle. So uh, presentation Sophie, not has a fun. lot to do with it. You know, yeah. you know, Final Fantasy VII uh, remake. If they mm -hmm. if they used like an anatomically similar version of Tifa as like Final Fantasy VII original, <laughs> <laughs> sell twice as many copies. I tell you, there would be a lot <laughs> Put her less complain. Uh, I I tell you that. Oh, um, about about how woke they are or whatever. Oh yeah, just silly, silly mm -hmm. people. Yeah. No, what what Square what Square should have done as an April Fools just like give them the size DLC. but it's like extremely polygon, you know? Just <laughs> let's go back to <laughs> like Lara Croft style. Yes. <laughs> you you wanted this. We got you. Original Tifa designs. DLC. Original Tifa. Yep. <laughs> It'll be the same proportion, stretched out, but Lara Croft. <laughs> you know, just mm, you, you like those polygons? Got you to polygons. Um Yep. But yeah, but back to Parasite Eve, I'm I'm surprised, honestly, that they have not made a uh, Square Enix version of Resident Evil with uh, Parasite Eve. It yeah. would be such a no-brainer to do. It would be so easy to do, right? Like uh, Silent Hill too. I mean, Silent Hill, the new one, they're they're trying to do things that's similar to Resident Evil because Resident Evil sells. Uh, so companies are all doing that. So it's no secret. I'm not just hating on Square Enix, but Square Enix is just more egregious about it. Um, but that's also why I'm surprised that they haven't tried to do that yet. Because it's prime for. It. Uh, have you ever played Parasite Eve, by the way, Mister Derek? No. You have not. Uh, no. Um, I've been I've been wanting to for a while, but 
You uh, should. It, it is a good game. Well, the first one, anyway. So uh, I'll give you the gist of it. Yeah. It, the gist of it is you are your name is Aya. You work for the NYPD and you fight mutants with yeah. um, psychic powers. It's like a New Year's Eve. That's all Eve you kind of really thing. need to know. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And and so that would make for a prime like Resident Evil game, uh, honestly. And it it would probably sell well if they can do one that actually is well made and not like a blatant cash grab. Um, but you know, Square Enix, so uh, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. It's interesting. I feel like, I mean, I hate to just. It's so easy to just talk at length about Square Enix because they are such an interesting company that mm -hmm. that um you know played such a big role in it's the a huge of target the too. That too. <laughs> And yeah, and gosh, it's so hard to to figure out exactly how I would change things for them to to let them be more successful than they are. But yeah, it's it's really I, I think yeah, it's it's a it's a tough one, and it's not it's above our pay grade. They, the 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 thing with Square Enix is I I think what they gotta realize is that this is a um slow decline when it comes to trust yeah so it's gonna take the almost equal amount of time to re rebuild that trust and until they're willing to like actually put a stand and say you know what we've been messing up instead of still making excuses it's just like a person like think of a relationship with someone yeah. Who like like think of an old friend who's this who you know you were good friends but they've just really disappointed you for the last like ten years. Yeah, they they maybe yeah. they they started drinking too much. Yeah, you know, made a jackass some of problems. themselves, had mm -hmm. some run-ins with the law. Yeah, uh, you know, and then and then all of a sudden you're like, do I really want to hang out with this person? Anymore? Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're they're fun to hang out with, but then you know they they take it too far. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I could see that, but then how how do you recover from that? Well. Yeah. By establishing a new pattern of go, go to an AA meeting, maybe, <laughs> you know, like, no, but seriously, like admit yeah. that you have a problem and start putting steps in, try to fix that and just really announce that. Right. And yeah. be like, look, I know I've got issues. We're going to let me try to work through this. It's going to take some time. But will you be there to help us through? And I think the fans are ready for you to just go to an AA meeting Square Enix and just admit that you have a problem. <laughs> we got a message Maybe here that's from, the first step. from Still Alive. Uh, a super chat here says, one thing I'm a little fearful with Visions of Mana is if Square Enix gives us uh, like early review copies, but then leaves out microtransactions like Capcom did with Dragon's Dogma 2. Mm -hmm. uh, or Dragon, yeah, Dragon's Dogma? Dragon Dogma. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's um, Dogma, yeah. Square did this with Chocobo Racing, apparently. Which is what are they doing with Dragon's Dogma? I like, didn't, I, hear I about didn't that. really follow it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Follow it. I, I know but, there's just some controversy with like Tekken. I uh, I knew that there was also a controversy with uh, wasn't it like Battlefront or one of like the Star Wars games? Somebody like. It started off fine, but the like, oh, it, it was reviewed yeah. really well. But then it was like full of loot boxes later on, mm -hmm. and it would take like ten thousand dollars to get a copy of or to become Darth Vader or whatever. Some crazy or ten thousand hour to play or something. Yeah, something unre some unreasonable amount of time to get Darth Vader unless you pay for things. Yeah. So even though technically you don't have to pay for it, technically technically you don't mm -hmm. by technicality. But when it's so unfeasible to do so, uh, in practice, you are saying you need to pay in order to get these people. Which, by the way, the game was a full price game. Yeah. So, and that, I think that's what uh, drew a lot of like criticism. Um, I don't like, and and some people will disagree with me. I'm sure, but this is my opinion. My opinion is. Uh, cosmetic things are perfectly fair game if you want to if you, because developing games is has not gotten cheaper uh and so one way to remedy it is just to sell non-essential items uh that are just looks doesn't change your gameplay mm -hmm. other than people just look different i'm okay with that right if they want to make supplemental money to 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 help because cash flow whatever like we can go into all these sure. things about business but 
I'm, I'm fair game. What I can't stand are day one like DLCs with content. So clearly you planted this to be like extra thing to make more money. Okay. It's not a, hey, this game sold really well. So we slapped something together, kind of like a near Automata. That mm -hmm. was more of the case. Like, hey, yeah. we didn't think this game was going to sell so well. But since it did, here's like a little extra DLC that we threw together. Uh, you can pay for it if you want. It doesn't really change the story. It's whatever. But the whole Coliseum thing. Um, that was fine. So day one, like content patch, uh, content DLC, terrible. Uh, loot boxes, anything that has to do with probability, terrible. You know, all the cosmetic skin, it's like, yeah, the skin is there. If you want it, you buy it. You know exactly how much you're buying it for. Okay, you know exactly what you're getting. You could just say no. It's like, it's a very fair transaction. Yeah. As soon as you loot box it, it's gambling. Like, don't yep. call it anything else. It's gambling. Yep. And right? I'm not a fan so, of that. And I, yeah. that's the thing about, like, I, it hasn't happened to me yet with any reviewer or without, with any reviews I've put out. And then they add stuff after the fact that would change my opinion. That hasn't happened yet. Um, but that is something that if it does ever happen, I will be sure to make follow-up videos talking about <laughs> and probably even take down the uh, original video, uh, honestly, yeah. because that that kind of stuff is super scummy. Um, yeah, and, and I think that about that's, Mike... that's one way that Square Enix could rack up a lot more ill will by trying something <laughs> like that so well vision of mana oh boy i will i would not shut up about it i, I will put them on full blast all day how dare you do this to my favorite series and yeah, my favorite series with um square enix is not final fantasy or saga it's actually the mana series which uh you know i'm, I'm super happy that they're doing this vision of mana thing but yeah yeah if it's like you said they, they put microsoft i would put them on blast <laughs> Well, guys, it is about that time. Time flies. I can't believe we actually filled about two hours uh, on two we stories. Gonna, I thought we were going to do 30 minutes. Like, hey, Derek, do you just want to do like a 30 minutes, just, like, you know, just chat and then we'll just like call it a day? Well, yeah, yeah, sure, time we'll flies when you're when you're just ragging on Square Enix for <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I can't wait to see the timestamp, you know, when, know. when it, if Freddie gets to it, it'll just be like, speaking of Freddie, thank you again for just keep doing our timestamps, Freddie. We don't say this enough, but Always thank you appreciate for that. It. Yeah. But so, if he did do that, it would just be like, Baku talks, uh, makes fun of uh, Square Enix. Derek makes fun of Square Enix. <laughs> Baku makes fun of Square Enix. Well, it's not two. just making it's fun, though, because we do want them to do better, because honestly, mm -hmm. they have a lot of IPs that I care about and, and enjoy That's playing. True. So if they could be better, that would be great. A Terra Enigma two would be nice, you know. <sighs> well, are we, are we going there? No, I, I no? ain't got time for that. That's going to be another discussion <laughs> cast. So guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, give it a like or a thumbs up. Because uh, I mean, let's face it, we're not really dealing with a whole lot of star power news that's going to draw in all the clicks. <laughs> it's true. So uh, yeah, we're not not. This this no news discussion stuff is not going <laughs> to pull in a lot of uh, search results for people. That's so uh, appreciate it. And uh, if you enjoy us on the various podcasting of platforms out there that exist still now that Google Podcasts is gone, uh, make sure you leave a nice review or something or a bad review. If we sucked, <laughs> let us know. And uh, until gentle. next week, probably depending on how much news there is. <laughs> I hope you all have a good week, and we'll see you on the other side. Have a great night, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.